Today I'll provide a deeper dive into the stock trading strategy I've been developing which uses RSI, Bollinger Bands, and the average true range indicator. I'll address some common questions that come through in the comments. Also, as this strategy is currently more of a swing strategy, I'll show how it can be adapted to work as a scalping strategy as well. This is a strategy I initially tested months ago after I came across it on the web, and it was called the Killer RSI Bollinger Band Strategy. However, I feel I've made enough modifications to this and validated this enough through backtesting that it's really become my own. So from here on out, I'm renaming this the Serious RSI Bollinger Band Strategy. Remember, this is for educational purposes only. Nothing here is investment advice, and I'm not an investment advisor. I do not advocate for or against any particular trading strategy. I'm just showing you some interesting math that I've done on my computer. So as a refresher, how does this strategy work, and, and, and what, what are these indicators? The, the strategy uses uh, three, three indicators. Now, first, the, the Relative Strength Index, RSI. This indicator looks at the last 14 candles by, by default and compares the average percentage gain over the last 14 candles to the average percentage loss over the last 14 candles. The indicator ranges from 0 to 100, and if the average gains and the average losses were equal, the RSI result would be 50. Uh, the greater the average gain, the higher the RSI, and vice versa, for a max of 100 and a low of, of 0. In my prior videos, I used a 13-period RSI because the source video I was backtesting from recommended that, but in my own backtesting, I've found no advantage uh, to using 13 period instead of just the default 14 period. So for simplicity, we'll stick with the default 14 period. Now, second indicator is the Bollinger Bands. Now, the Bollinger Bands start with a simple moving average, uh, which is the middle band, and the upper and lower bands are a multiple, a multiple of two by default, of the standard deviation of the price over the specified number of candles, by default 20 bars, but in our case we use 30 bars, added to the middle band to form the upper band, and subtracted from the middle band to form the lower band. Uh, third indicator is the Bollinger band width. It's not really a separate indicator, it's a derivative of the Bo Bollinger, of Bollinger bands. So the Bollinger band width is simply the upper Bollinger Band minus the lower Bollinger Band, and then expressed as a fraction of the middle band. So this will be a number between 0 and 1, although on some platforms you may see this multiplied by 100 to give you a number between 0 and 100. And finally we use the average true range, and the, the average true range is a calculation based on the average size of the candlesticks over the specified number of bands. And it can be thought of as a volatility marker, uh, marker just as the Bollinger Bands can. And for our strategy, we'll use this um, to calculate our stop loss and profit target. It's not used as one of the entry criteria. While we could just use a fixed percentage of stops and, and, and targets, uh, the advantage here is that our profit uh, or tar target or our stop loss will be adapted to the average recent volatility of each individual stock that we're testing. So now that we understand what the indicators are, here's the strategy. This is a long trading strategy that can be used in a variety of time frames. I'm using Thinkorswim today to visualize. Now, it's not as pretty as TradingView, which I've used in the past to vi vi visualize in other videos, but uh, I can make the visual visualization here more accurate to the strategy. To the price chart, I've applied the 30 period Bollinger Bands with standard deviation lines set to two standard deviations. And for our strategy, we actually only need the lower band, so I'll hide the others. Then I've applied the default RSI with the lower threshold set to 25, and the line color changes when the RSI goes below that threshold. Then I've applied the Bollinger bandwidth with the line set to change color when it goes above our threshold, which varies by time frame. Uh, and we're going to start by looking at the daily time frame where this is set to 0 0.3. L lastly, I'll apply the visualization for our profit target and stop loss. 
To show you what the ATR looks like, first I'll apply that as an indicator on the bottom. Um, but we won't need this because I've coded ATR bands. This takes a multiple of the ATR value from the previous candle and adds that to the open of the candle for the target and subtracts it from the open of the candle for the stop loss. In, in the case of this daily time frame, I'm showing you a target of two ATRs and a stop of three ATRs. So when we backtest, we'll test as if we enter the trade exactly at the open of the candle after the trigger candle. In live trading, of course, a, a trader would want to verify the executed entry price and then use that to calculate what stop and target to use. That's because your actual achieved entry price may be slightly above or below the opening price of the candle, especially if you're executing a market trade. Now that the chart is set up, here's the rules. First, we wait for the price to drop below the lower Bollinger Band and the RSI to fall below 25. Then if the next candle closes above the high of the prior candle, so if we make a strong up move, and the Bollinger Bandwidth is greater than our threshold, then that's your trigger tank candle. And uh, for, for these daily candles, I'm using a Bollinger Bandwidth threshold of greater than 0 0.3. Now, on that strong green candle, the RSI does not have to still below, be below 25. Okay, so the RSA does not have to be still below 25 on that trigger candle because if that trigger candle makes a strong enough move up, it will often pull the RSI above 25. The trade is entered on the open of the subsequent candle. The target price, in this case the daily candles, is the entry price plus two times the ATR of the trigger candle. The stop is the entry price minus three times the ATR of the trigger candle. So, so that's what these stop and target bands are showing. The ATR from the previous candle multiplied by our chosen multiplier added to or subtracted from the open of the candle. And that's fine for backtesting. In, in real life, remember, if you attempted to enter the trade at the open of the candle, then after the trade went through, you'd want to verify what your purchase price was and then add or subtract those ATR multiples to determine your target and stop. I get a lot of questions about the, about the, the ATR stops and targets, so I want to clarify that. Regarding those multiples, now understand that's not set in stone. I've tested numerous combinations of different multiples and, fa and found good results. This is just what I've found as optimal. So I'll show some more results later, but what I do is I've coded a system that will take stock price data, apply the strategy rules, and simulate all the trades, and then express the results as annualized profit or loss if you were able to keep your money continuously invested in this strategy one trade at a time. Now, of course, in real life, there may be times when there's no entry signals available, or in real life, you may take multiple trades simultaneously, but I report it this way as it lets me compare different strategies' performance head-to-head. -head. Also, I always start out by testing the exit criteria against random entry points to make sure our strategy results aren't just due to overall market conditions. So in this case, what if you took daily price data on several thousand stocks for the last five years and just chose random days to buy the stock and then sold the stock when it either gained two average two range intervals or lost three ATRs? Well, you'd gain 23% per year on your invested capital. So any strategy we test has to be better than that to be worthwhile. For the simulation, I assume a starting account balance of $10,000 and a trade size of $5,000 per trade. Doing this lets me calculate drawdown. So for these daily candles, you'll see that uh, the $5,000 you invest gained 89% per year, and the account overall gained 44% per year, of course, because you're only investing half. For this simulation, there were 1,242 trades simulated, and trades were on average 20 bars, or about a month. 
So about 100 years worth of trading was simulated. You'll see a timeout percent, and that's because I set a maximum trade length. For this run, it's set at 50 bars. If the stock doesn't hit the target or stop within 50, within 50 bars, the stock is sold at whatever the price is. This makes sure that all, tra all trades get equal treatment. For, for each trade, the same duration of future price action is tested. Now, there's over a thousand trades here. Nobody would have taken every one of these trades. So to simulate real world performance, I have the system select a hundred of these trades at random, and, and would, would that have been profitable? You know, of course, each time you run that, you get a little bit different result because it's checking random samples. So let's do that a bunch of times to get a bell curve of likely real world outcomes. So I run this 10,000 times and you can see that nearly every 100 trade sample would have ended up profitable, averaging $366 profit per trade. That sounds great, but what about drawdown? If we take 100 trades, starting with a $10,000 balance and risking $5,000 per trade, what's the maximum drawdown we'd see on our account? So let's test that 10,000 times. And, uh-oh, either I made a coding mistake or almost all of the time we blow our entire account. And I can tell you I did not make a coding mistake. By the way, if we, if we do always blow our whole account, then why are the overall results still positive? Well, because my backtesting system will allow the account balance to go negative. Because with such large numbers of backtesting trades, it's, it's the only way for me to get an accurate accounting of the annualized of annualized loss, if a strategy does have a loss. So this means that you would almost always draw down the entire account and then some. But if you kept pulling $5,000 from other, some other source and you kept trading, you would eventually gain back everything you lost and much more. Well. That's great, but we don't want to blow our whole account. So how do we fix this? Well, by risking much less of our account per trade. So let's risk just $1,000 per trade on a $10,000 account. Our invested capital would still gain 89% per year, and the overall account would gain 8.9% per year since we're only investing 10% of our account at any one time. Now the trade histogram should look about the same, and it does. Obviously less profit per trade as these are now $1,000 trades rather than $5,000 trades. But our drawdown histogram now shows a much more manageable average maximum drawdown of 26%, and you never blow the whole account. Uh, but wow, you only invest $1,000 at a time, you, you, but you still end up drawing down 26% of your account before ending up with a profit. Uh, with a profit? Well, yes, and that gets us to the point of stepping back and asking what what is this strategy and what do these entry rules mean in plain English? This is a high volatility strategy and it's similar to a gap down strategy. On, on the daily candles, having the Bollinger bandwidth greater than 0 0.3 means that the distance between the upper and the lower bands uh, basically a distance from two standard deviations above to two standard deviations below the average is greater than 30% of the stock price. That's a stock with a good deal of recent volatility. Also, having the price drop below the lower, lower Bollinger Band means that the stock's downward price action is outpacing two standard deviations below the average. And the RSI below 25 indicates significant re recent weakness in the price. So it makes sense to say that this strategy is identifying high risk, high volatility situations. Therefore, it makes sense that there's a high degree of potential drawdown. And it makes sense that the average profits uh, can be greater than you would typically see in stock price movement. So knowing the expected average drawdown is important to trading this successfully so that you can risk an appropriate amount per trade. I mentioned other time frames, and I really prefer this strategy on the 30 minute candles. The ATR and the RSI will adjust to any time frame, but any fixed values that we use, uh, for example, the fixed percent for the Bollinger bandwidth, will need to be adjusted for lower time frames. 
For example, it would be uncommon at the 30 minute or 15 minute or lower time frames for the distance between the Bollinger Bands to be more than 30% of the stock price. So we need to adjust it for more expected values in lower time frames. In testing, I've found that for 30 minute candles, a Bollinger Bandwidth of 0.15 is reasonable. Now, in my prior video, I've shown all these results. The results do change somewhat as I continue to update my data sets with new price data. Now, my 30 minute data doesn't go back five years, but it does go back about two years. So on the 30 minute candles, here's the results. Starting with just random entries for a baseline, the invested capital is basically break even. There's a small 3.8% per year loss. But running the strategy, tested on about 1,400 trades, the invested capital gains 128% per year. And if we stick with just in investing $1,000 of our $10,000 initial account at a time, the overall gain on the account, of course, would be 12% per year. Now, most people wouldn't take all 1,400 trades, but as these are shorter trades, I think it's very reasonable that the average person could take 300 trades over that time period, maybe even more. And if you did that, 94% of the time, your 300 trade sample would have been profitable. And the average maximum drawdown on the account over a 300 trade sample would be very manageable, 9.3% median drawdown, and never more than 30%. This is using a Bollinger bandwidth threshold of 0.15 and a profit target 1.6 ATRs above the entry price and a stop loss 1.8 times the ATR below the entry price. The final thing I want to show is how to use this as uh, scalping, as more of a day trading strategy. Right now the average trade length is 11 30 minute bars. So yes, many of these trades finish in one trading session, but many go to the next day or, or longer on the 30 minute uh, candle time frame. Uh, let me show you how I go about exploring ways to improve these strategies. W once I run the simulation, I'm left with a data frame that has a list of all the trades that were that were simulated. And so he here I started to play with what is the average gain in dollars per trade and whether shorter or longer duration trades did better or worse. And there was a clear association between shorter trades and better outcomes. In other words, our strategy had much better predictive power in the two to three bars right after the entry. So one strategy would be just to sell any stock that didn't hit a profit or stop after two or three bars. So simulating a timeout after two bars, the random entries uh, again showed basically break even a small loss, and the real simulation showed a staggering 435% gain on invested capital. Since these trades are usually timing out rather than hitting either the stop or the profit target, I tightened the targets to a profit target of 1.2 times the ATR above the entry and a stop 1.6 times the ATR below the entry. Uh, this resulted in 481% profit per year on invested capital, still with 67% of the trades timing out. And again, very, very manageable distribution of outcomes and drawdown. In fact, the drawdown and profit per trade are both so small that I think it makes sense to risk more of the account per trade. So instead of $1,000 per trade, if you do $3,000 per trade, you'll make more per trade, of course. And the average max drawdown is still only 9.3%. I get asked frequently about whether stock commissions are factored in, and no, it's not. If you have commissions at your broker, then that can make a big difference, of course. So I hope this was helpful. If you found it helpful, please like the video, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to see more content. Thanks for watching.